What's up guys, in today's video, it's going to be all about pads. We are going to go over what pads to use, when to use these pads, everything about pads is gonna be in this video. Let's go. Like I said in the intro, we are going to go over pads in this video. I have here a wool pad, we have foam pads, we have microfiber pads. So you may be wondering like, hey Drake, where the heck are you right now? <laughs> um, I'm actually at my dad's window tinting shop here in Pensacola, Florida, and I got rained out of work today and it was just kind of a long day uh, with the family and stuff. But I had a, you know, I was like, hey, I wanna go work. I wanna make a video for you guys. So I decided to make a video on pads. I just thought it would be a good time to just take some time and go over pads. You guys are asking me all of the time. I have a few of you guys at least a week write and say, Drake, what pad do I use? You know, what's the best pad to use? Um, what's the best pad for compounding? What's the best pad for waxing? What's the best pad for polishing? When do I use certain pads? All of those questions I'm going to answer in this video. So if you have questions on pads, watch this video all the way through the end. It's gonna be probably pretty long. Basically gonna give you guys most, if not all, probably not all, but most of my knowledge when it comes to pads. Guys, if you get any value out of this video, please, like always, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell notification, so every time I make a video, it will pop up. And also, please share these videos with your detailing friends. That would mean the world to me. All of the products that I talk about in this video are in the description down below, so if you'd like to purchase these pads, go to my website, drakesmarinedetailsupply.com, or just click the links down below, and you can check out all of our pads, plus many, many, many more pads that are not in this video that are available on that website. So before we hop really into the educational side of this video, I want you guys to know that these are not the only pads available, okay? There are thousands and thousands and thousands of pads available on the market. Um, just because I am particularly using Lake Country pads in this video, or I'm going over buff and shine pads in this video, that does not mean that is the only pad you should ever use, but I am going to go over these pads because these are the pads that I particularly use. I know these pads very well. I know precisely how the buff and shine wool pad cuts. I know precisely how the orange Lake Country Force Rotation pad cuts. So when you guys ask me questions, I typically recommend these pads because these are the pads that I use day in and day out. And obviously these are the pads I recommend because it works for the system and the pressures and the speeds and everything that I use. Now, you can use 3M pads, you can use Griot's Garage pads, you can use Rupes pads. They're all gonna cut differently, but there is nothing wrong with using those other pads as well. So before we get into every pad and what every pad does, guys, you have to realize that these pads all are going to act different on different surfaces. Every pad that I talk about is going to act different on paint versus gel coat. Every pad is going to act and cut differently depending on either a rotary machine or a DA machine or a forced rotation machine like the Flex 3401 VRG that I use in a lot of my videos. If you use certain aspects of this video and I'm talking about medium cuts and light polishes and light cuts and heavy cuts, and if you don't know what any of that stuff means, you're gonna learn that in this video, you have to realize that it may not always work the same. If I'm giving you advice on the Lake Country Force Rotation Orange Pad on a Flex 341 VRG and you try to use the same pad on a DA, it may not work the exact same. Now, that does not mean you can't do that. It just means it may not work 100% the exact same. So the best way to get the best results is to do exactly what I say and do exactly what I recommend. And I'm not just saying that because I'm trying to sell you guys stuff. I promise you. I've had a few of you guys write me or comment or whatever and say, oh, you're just saying this to sell stuff. Guys, if I make a little money, great. If I don't, honestly, I'm just here to try to help you guys understand detailing and pads the best that I possibly can. We are gonna start from heavier down to waxing and ceramic coating applications when it comes to pads. So the most aggressive pad you are going to use is going to be a wool pad. Now let's go over wool pad. This right here is a buff and shine wool pad. This is actually the pad that I use day in, day out in my detailing experience. Buff and shine pads. Are they the best pad? Absolutely. 
Probably not. Now, I'm saying that, no disrespect to Buff and Shine. The only reason why I use these pads is one, they do work really well. Two, I've used them for years. And three, they're not very expensive. A lot of these other brands like 3M, you know, their pads are like 50 bucks, 30 to 50 bucks a piece. This right here run you about 20. These Buff and Shine pads are very inexpensive. And honestly, they hold up pretty well. Now, they may not hold up as great as like a 3M or something like that, but they do the job. They get the job done and I really have no complaints. When it goes to application on these wool pads, when you use a wool pad, it is for compounding and cutting. That is it. Don't try to finish out a surface with a wool pad. Don't even try to polish or, or wax with the wool pad. Please, guys, do not wax with a wool pad. All right, I say it again. Do not wax with a wool pad. Wool pads are amazing at cutting off oxidation or cutting into the gel coat to remove sanding marks. So if you watch any of my other videos, like a lot of you guys have, go and watch them. You will notice that after I do a sand or if a boat is not severely oxidized and I just wanna cut it with some compound, I'm going to use this pad on a rotary. Now this particular pad is a double-sided wool pad. I recommend double-sided wool pads. These pads are gonna go on your rotary machine, so either like a DeWalt or a Makita. I personally like Makitas. This is a double-sided. You do not have to get a double-sided wool pad. You can get single-sided. They work just as fine. There's really no difference. I personally like the double-sided because if I'm getting in a weird tight spot, I can use this side of the pad like normal, you know, like on the surface area. And then if I have to get like up, I can use the top of the pad. That's the only real benefit. And you kind of get two pads in one when you get a double-sided wool pad. So guys, when it comes to wool pads, we are always going to use a heavy cut compound like Stark Level R, Press the Supercut, or Ardex Super 600. Those are some popular compounds that I recommend when it comes to cutting oxidation or removing sand marks. Now, when you're running a wool pad, this is going to be ran at about anywhere from 900 to about 1500 RPMs on your rotary polisher. And like I said, this pad is designed to remove heavy oxidation, medium oxidation, and sanding marks. This pad is gonna cut like crazy and it will 100% of the time leave holograms and swirl marks, which then have to be polished with either a DA or a force rotation machine like the Flex 341 VRG that we're gonna go over here in just a minute. There are many different variations of a wool pad. There's the blue heavy, heavy cut wool pad. This one right here is actually a cutting wool pad. It's our standard cutting wool pad. There is even a polishing wool pad. It's a yellow pad by Buff and Shine. Um, it's actually a good pad. I just don't use it, okay? Um, I find it uh, somewhat irrelevant in a way. Now you may ask about their detailers and they may tell you otherwise. Save you some money go ahead and get you the 1.5 8 inch wool pad, okay? Now, if you get the 1.25, that will cut a little more. Now, the only difference between the 1.5 inch and the 1.25 inch is the length. The 1.25 is a little shorter, so that means it's actually gonna cut a little more. So if you need something with a little more cut, buy a 1.25 wool pad. Or if you want something that has a little more cushion and a little less cut, still gonna cut a lot, but just a little less cut, get a 1.5 inch wool pad. Next on the list is going to be foam pads. Now, in this video, these are all the five inch foam pads. Um, you also can get six inch. I typically like the five inch and the six inch options when it comes to foam pads. If you have a heavy oxidized boat, you are always going to use a heavy cut compound on the rotary machine with a wool pad to cut out the oxidation or sanding marks if you had to sand. Then the next step in line is going to be finishing out the boat. This is a big mistake that a lot of people don't do. A lot of people hit it with a wool pad. It'll look really shiny, but there's a lot of swirl marks in it that you want to finish out properly before you go ahead and seal it. And that's where these foam pads are gonna come into play. Now, my absolute favorite foam pad that I've ever come across is going to be Lake Country Forced Rotation foam pads, okay? Lake Country has a few, I think probably five or six different options when it comes to foam pads. I personally like the force rotation pads the most, especially if you're using a Flex 3401 VRG, like I recommend in all my videos, or any force rotation machine. Go ahead and make sure you get the force rotation Lake Country foam pads. If you do not have a Flex 3401 VRG and you only have a DA, like the Griot's Garage DA or a Harbor Freight DA or whatever DA you might have, these pads will still work on a DA. 
I'm gonna go from highest to lowest on the pads that I personally use for boats. First on the list, we have our gray heavy cut foam pad. This pad is super dense. I mean, it is very, very dense, very hard pad to work with. I really don't use that often. Now I will use it in some cases. I have a video where I use this pad and a lot of you guys buy this pad, but I really don't use this pad that often. This pad is gonna be specifically for when a customer has very, very light oxidation or maybe your boat has very, very light oxidation um, and you're wanting to compound that out and polish in the same step. Okay, this is gonna be a very good pad because it's gonna cut pretty good. It's not gonna cut nearly as good as the wool pad, but it will cut pretty good and it's going to leave a nice finish. So you're not gonna have holograms and swirls or anything like that when you use this pad on a DA or a force rotation. I don't particularly love this pad for just polishing scenarios. If you did a wool pad and now you're trying to finish up and polish, you can use this pad. But like I said, this pad is one of those ones where you really wanna cut pretty good, but you wanna finish at one step. This is gonna be a really good pad for you. So this is the Lake Country Force Rotation Gray heavy cut pad. With that said, let's hop to my two favorite pads. These are my most used favorite foam pads that I buy and that I use currently to this day. Now, second on the list is going to be the medium cut orange pad by Lake Country. Again, this is the force rotation pad. This is obviously one step down from the gray. So it goes gray, orange, and white. So you have your gray pad, which is gonna be a really heavy cut. This is gonna be kind of a medium cut foam pad. This is the pad that I use after I do my wool pad. So typically if you watch a lot of my videos, I'm going to compound with this pad and I'm typically going to use Minzerna 400 with this orange Lake Country Force Rotation foam pad. Foam pads are really, really good, like I said, at removing the swirls and the holograms that the wool pad creates. You know, you just buffed out the oxidation with the rotary and a wool pad. Now you're going to want to follow up with this orange Lake Country pad, either on a Flex 3401 VRG or a DA of your choice. Either way, it will work. I typically like to use Minzerna 400 or Stark Elevate is another great product that works really good with this pad. It is going to cut out those swirls and holograms and leave the finish absolutely perfect pretty much every time. There are different variables in that. If it's a dark colored boat, you are probably going to have to follow up with the white Lake Country pad. Now this is a one step down pad. This pad, the white one, is one step finer or one step down than the orange pad. If you have a white boat, you can typically cut and finish with the orange pad absolutely no problem. Now, if you have a black or a dark, dark blue, dark red, any darker color boat, you may have to finish up with the white Lake Country force rotation pad by Lake Country because it's a little, it's a little softer and it's gonna finish out a little more. I usually recommend if you're going to be cutting with a wool pad, Go ahead, follow up with this pad with the Minzerna 400 to remove the swirls and holograms. And if it's on a black or a dark color boat, it may leave a little bit of hazing behind because this pad is still a pretty aggressive pad. So you're gonna have to follow up with this white Lake Country pad. I usually like to follow up with Minzerna 2500 with this pad, or you can do Stark Ignition. It's a very, very good uh, lighter polish than the Minzerna 400 with this pad. Any time that you use a wool pad to cut, go ahead and finish with one of these foam pads from Lake Country. You can use it on a DA, you can use it on a Flex 3401 VRG, and they will both work great. If you're in a market for a machine, the Flex 3401 VRG is an amazing machine because you can basically push and stand on that puppy and it's going to spin on like a DA. A DA of your choice, well basically if you put it at any angle or if you put a lot of pressure on it, it's gonna stop spinning, which obviously stops you from polishing and it just creates more work. So if you can afford it, go ahead and get your Flex 3401 VRG to use with these pads and you are going to thank me later. I promise you. All right, guys, so with all that said, we have our wool pad that's gonna be our cutting pad, it's gonna be our compounding pad, and then we're gonna polish with one of these pads. Usually these two pads, the gray pad is only for rare instances in my opinion. Um, typically, you're always gonna use the orange pad, so you're always typically going to use the wool orange pad, and then on those darker colored boats, or some of those stubborn gel coats, like Riballo has a very stubborn gel coat where it will leave a haze or a light marring behind, go ahead and finish up with the White Lake Country pad with Minzerna 2500 or Stark Ignition. Now that we have all that said, 
Sorry, I'm getting long-winded. Let's go over the microfiber pad. Okay, so microfiber pads are pretty new to the industry. Um, you know, they, they've been around in cars for a little bit. These pads are actually very, very good when it comes to a few things. You can polish with these pads, you can correct with these pads, and you can also wax with these pads. Now, if you watch any of my videos for any length of time, I love waxing with these microfiber pads. Now, for a few reasons, okay? If we compare the two, you can see that the microfiber pad is significantly thinner than the foam pad. If you're using a sealant, you know, like Stark Hyperhold, Jeskar Powerlock, anything like that, if I'm putting wax on this pad, it's going to soak into this pad, okay? And you are going to waste a lot of product. When you're waxing a boat, if you're waxing a boat, if you're waxing an RV, use a microfiber pad. This is the Euro Fiber Pad from Buff and Shine. It is a great all around pad. You can polish with this pad and you can also wax with this pad. I typically only wax with the microfiber pads. They're nice, soft, and plush. I do apply ceramic on larger areas like the hull of a boat with this pad as well. At the end of the day, guys, I typically only use microfiber pads for applying wax or sealants. That's not saying you can't use microfiber pads. There's plenty of other great microfiber pads out there. Meguiar's actually makes really good microfiber pads for polishing that can replace the foam pads. But honestly, when it comes to boat detailing, I typically really love just sticking to the foam pads. They work. Not saying you can't use microfiber pads. A lot of people out there uh, use microfiber pads for correcting. Um, I personally just don't use them. I'm not saying you can't use them. I just personally don't. If there's other questions that you guys have that I did not answer clearly in the video, please comment down below those questions and I will personally get back to you as soon as I possibly can. That is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I talked a lot. I know I said the word pad like literally a thousand times. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit that little bell notification. So every time I make a video, it'll pop up and I will see you guys on my next video. Let's go.